One of my favorite parts about developing with .NET and .NET MAUI when it comes to iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows applications is Visual Studio's XAML Hot Reload and .NET Hot Reload that is built in. Now, this is one of my favorite features because it makes me super duper productive when I'm building applications. All I got to do is change my code, hit save or you know, hit the little hot reload button and boom, all my changes are immediately showing up right there for me. So that means I can design my application with my real data or mock data or whatever I'm doing and get that super quick productivity loop. But what if you're developing your .NET MAUI applications with C Sharp UI and the C Sharp markup extension, for example, in the .NET Community Toolkit? How do you get that same exact iterative loop when you're doing that. Today, I want to show you how to do it because my good friend, David Ortnow, a ways back, wrote a blog post and I need to tell you and show you what this means so you can be super duper productive in your applications. Let's check it out. All right, everyone, I am all about hot reloading nonstop. So let's just get into the code. Now, when I show a lot of .NET MAUI here on this channel, I often show XAML. So here's some XAML here. This is a file new project. I have this running on Windows, so I can tap on an image. I can go ahead and tap on a label. It updates here, and I can say, hello, everyone, and then a bunch of exclamation points, and it updates in real time right there. And in fact, I don't even have to hit save for XAML Hot Reload to kick in, which is super duper cool. Now let's say that I want to add more labels. Well, I just go ahead and add more labels, right? I'm adding more things in there. Now this is cool because XAML gives us this hot reload capability, but what if I want to change code behind? For example, this click handler here, whenever I click it, it increases the count by one. Well, if I go over into my solution explorer and go to the code behind over here, we can see that this is incrementing by one every single time. So all I got to do is just change that to 10, for example, and now .NET hot reload kicks in. Now up here in Visual Studio, we have this little hot reload button and an option to hot reload on file save. So you have those two options here. I'm just going to hit the save button. This is going to hot reload and basically swap out this method. And now when I come into my running app, we can see that it's increasing by 10 every single time, which is super duper cool. All right. Well, then you're thinking, well, if I am able to swap out and do .NET hot reload, how would this have impact if I'm building things inside of C Sharp when it comes to UI and .NET MAUI? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. I've been building out right here on my YouTube channel, a threads clone basically. And here's what it looks like today. I've just built out this homepage and then I have this search menu here that shows me to follow and unfollow people, which is nice. Now this actually is built a 100% inside of C sharp. So what we can see over here in my code, and actually I can bring up the live preview fun fact. It doesn't have to be XAML to preview it, um, is that we have a home page. This is creating a list view and it has this thread cell. So if I go into my thread cell, I have a thread view, and this is using those cool C sharp markup extensions, everything for me right there. So that's really, really cool. Now this is normal. I just have a home page. Uh, it's a, a implementing from a content page. And then over here we have the list view and I'm setting the content. So that's it. I'm just kind of pulling that in good to go. Now at this point though, if I'm inside of this home page that we can see, you might be thinking, well, couldn't I just go to definition of that thread cell and that view? And I don't know, change, for example, uh, maybe one of those uh, labels or maybe that image on it. So for example, let's say I wanted to make the, um, the message here bigger. Couldn't I just say dot font size and I set that equal to 25 over here. And then James, you just said I could hot reload this thing or, or just save it. Like, wouldn't that work? I, I see no changes. Well, oh, that's because it doesn't know how to reload the UI, right? We've updated the code and that's been hot reloaded. Yes, it actually has been. However, it's not recreating the page. So unless I had a navigation event, then that would trigger a new creation of the page. So that is what is causing us not to be able to come in and actually reload this in real time. Or you just think it's architectural based. There's no way to trigger 
and tell the hot reload, please reload the constructor here and recreate the page. But we can do that. And in fact, David's blog post went into more detail about that. I want to walk through it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take a look at this hot reload service. And this came directly from David's blog post and you enable this only in debug. So you can copy and paste this directly from um, this source control or David's blog post. And what this does is it uses some system reflection to grab access to a metadata update handler attribute and specifically in my namespace and inside this hot reload service. Now what this does is it gives us an event that will get triggered, which is the update application event. And that will then trigger this event that we can subscribe to, right? So this is going to invoke it with our types. So this is part of the hot reload service in visual studio. Now when I'm debugging, it's basically triggering these events. And what we're doing is we're looping into it. Okay. So what that would enable us to do is re-architecture our application a little bit and loop into this event so we can recreate our UI. So if I go into my base page that I've created, cause I have a bunch of pages, I've created a new abstract base page that inherits from content page. This is going to give me one method called build. And what this will do is let me implement that method on every single page. And that will, what is what will be creating the UI. Now what we can do is whenever the page is navigated to, we're going to call the build method, right? So it's going to call it. So like when the page first starts, it's just going to build it up, but it's also going to loop into this event, which is update application event. That's going to add an event here to reload UI. When I've navigated from it, it's going to unsubscribe that event and that reload UI event specifically, because it can happen on any thread will invoke on the main thread, the build method again. So it's going to wipe away our UI and build a new UI for us. But since the rest of .NET re hot reload is kicked in any code that I change in that build method or anywhere else in that chain will be updated too. So now all I need to do is go back into my home page. I'm going to come in and say, instead of content page, that's going to be my base page. It's going to ask me to implement my abstract class. And all I got to do is copy anything I had before down into build or boom, I'm done. Now, every single other page of my application can just inherit from that base page. In fact, if I go over to my search page, we can see that this is set up exactly the same. We have inherited from our base page. And then down here we have the same build method. That's building up a list view, setting the content there. So that's really, really cool. So now all we have to do is open our app. Here it is. And we can see the really big text, which is, which is fascinating, right? But now check this out. Let me go ahead and just open up the, the live preview here. I can go back into my home page. Now this is kind of crazy. If I wanted to, I could just say new button and I could say, um, dot text and I'll say, hello, hot reload. Okay. And I could even use the, the community toolkit, bring in new namespaces here. That's kind of nice. I'm just going to hit save or in this case, the hot reload button. And now our entire application right here is a big button, right? inside of here. So here's this big button that's inside of here, which is really cool. Now it doesn't know about my XAML cause this is saying app shell. So it's the shell there, but now it's a big button. I could just change it back to list view just like that. Hit save and hit that hot reload button. And now my UI is there, right? Which is really cool. Now what's nice is it's not just what's in the build method. Whenever I trigger any hot reload, it's going to trigger the hot reload for this page. So if I go into that uh, thread view here, and we change this back, this font size back down to 14. Again, I could hit this button here. I just hit save. This is going to trigger that chain of events and boom, our UI has been updated. Now it even goes further, right? Cause we're inside this thread view, but if we take a look, we also have a user view, for example, and this user view is what's being displayed on this page. So if I open up the app, this James Montemagno with the verified check mark and also 
on the search page here for James Montemagno or Scott Hanselman with the checkbox. It's actually being shared between those two pages, which means if I go into that user view and I change this now to 24, make it huge and hit save, what we're gonna see is that it updates on our page, but if I navigate back to the home page, that's also been hot reloaded as well. So we're building that up 100% and all of those changes are being synchronized right across of it. This is really, really cool. I love it. And it makes you super duper productive when you're building your UIs with C Sharp and Don and Maui. Now, there are of course gonna be some things that you're gonna run into if you're adding new classes or you're changing base classes and things like that, that just .NET Hot Reload itself won't be able to handle. But what I found is that this is a very, very delightful way after building my models and some of my view models up to add new properties, to do new things, and then to start to iterate heavily on my UI. I will put a link to David's blog and also to the source code for this one. And of course, you can subscribe right here on my YouTube channel for more Donna and Maui content, all sort of amazing things happening. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you are building UIs with C Sharp and you wanna see more stuff, go ahead and feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to know. And again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and jam that notification button. So until next time, thanks for watching.